Greetings once again, friends, live from Retro Central. My name is Peter, and this is Consolation. As always, I thank you very much for taking the time to check out my work as we continue to celebrate this summer of PlayStation. Think for a moment, if you will, about your favorite year or the year that had the most impact on you in console video game history. There are a lot of good answers. Uh, I know some people have talked about 1998 as being an important year, and it was. Games like Metal Gear Solid and Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time really made that year one of the best ever. Plus you had Spyro the Dragon, which was great, and there were some other games that were just tremendous. Perhaps 1999 was your favorite year. The year that the Dreamcast made its debut. The year that Final Fantasy VIII finally came out after two years of waiting. It was the year that Pokemon really zoomed into the public eye and became very popular. But for me, when talking about my favorite year in console video game history, my choice is 1997. Yes, the year the Titanic ruled the box office charts. Yes, the year that Elton John ruled the singles charts for 12 weeks with Candle in the Wind. But none of that has anything to do with video game consoles. Let me give you some of the reasons why I consider 1997 to be so important. First of all, and it doesn't necessarily have to do anything with consoles, but I'm including it anyway because it's my video. This GX TV that you see right here, I bought this in 1997. Yes, this is the exact same model. It's lived through hundreds, if not thousands, of hours of use, through more than a few residential moves from place to place. And although the picture is a little tired, and although one of the AV inputs on the back of the TV no longer works, the TV is still more than functional. As a matter of fact, I still have the remote control, and it still works, provided I put AA batteries or AAA batteries in it. Um, so the TV has served me well. It's one of the best purchases I've ever made. Uh, if you think about the fact that this TV would be old enough to vote in a presidential election this year, if it could, uh, that's pretty impressive for a television set. But let's talk about the games themselves. What are the games that, to me, make 1997 such a big year, especially as a PlayStation owner? Well, I've talked about Final Fantasy VII already. That one goes without saying. Um, definitely excited to have played that game, even though I can admit on camera that I have not beaten Final Fantasy VII yet. Um, but there are lots of other games that I want to submit to you, the YouTube jury, when considering 1997 to be such a good year. Consider for a moment Ace Combat 2, released by Namco for the PlayStation. Air Combat was basically a conversion of an arcade game with a little bit of a story kind of thrown in. Um, it was an early title in the PlayStation's lifetime. Some of the music was really good, but the graphics were rudimentary, and uh, it, was, it was okay. It's still a game that I play from time to time, but not like Ace Combat 2. This game upped the ante in just about every facet, from improved graphics to an improved storyline uh, to its branching mission setup. The music is just great. There's a lot more speech in the game. And there's a certain method of replayability here that Air Combat just didn't have. Uh, although I think I prefer the Ace Combat games on the PlayStation 2 a little bit more. Specifically uh, Ace Combat 4 and Ace Combat 0. Uh, Ace Combat 2 still has a special place in my heart. And hey, if it was good enough to be remade into a 3DS game, then you know it's a pretty darn good game in its own right. So that's Ace Combat 2, one of many games that I want to share. Some of you may recognize this guy right here. This is Colony Wars for the PlayStation, released by Psygnosis. This was back when outer space shooters were still a thing, and something that we just didn't take for granted or not care about anymore. And unlike the Wing Commander games, especially Wing Commanders 3 and 4, that had these epic full-motion video sequences with Mark Hamill and Jonathan Reese davies uh, this game was more about the look, the immersion, and the way that the story was told. It's also worth mentioning that this game is very difficult, and playing it to completion is a test for any video game player, regardless of skill level. This is still a great game, uh, and I recommend it if you have a PlayStation, PS2, or a PS3. 
how about extreme stuff? Before Tony Hawk's Pro Skater was big, snowboarding games were very big, such as Cool Borders 2, released by Sony Computer Entertainment and developed by Web Systems. This is really the first extreme game at home that I really got into with any measure, and the reason I got into it was because of the official PlayStation magazine and one of the demos that was included. Without that, I wouldn't have had any interest in this game, and I probably wouldn't have cared. Truth be told, I am awful at this game, but I still play it every now and again just to think back to 1997 and how cool a year that was. If you're looking for more info on Cool Borders 2, check out my buddy Joe Walker's channel. He did a really cool review on it. I'll link it in the description below. You want more evidence? I got more evidence because you can't handle the truth. How about Fighting Force, released by IDOS Entertainment and developed by Core Design? Basically, the 3D answer to Streets of Rage, even though it's not Streets of Rage at all. Yes, this game has problems. I totally admit that. I played it again recently, and it does have its issues. But there's something fun about just going around and peeding the stuffing out of dudes that I can't quite put my finger on. Yes, you can always go back and play the Streets of Rage games or the Final Fight games, but this was something new and unique. And back in 1997... It was something that we really hadn't played in a while, and it felt good. It was a lot of fun to play. So Fighting Force. This game in value is starting to go up a little bit uh, in retail stores, gaming retail stores. So uh, pick it up if you haven't already before it gets more expensive. I know a lot of you aren't sports game fans, but I am. So I'm going to talk about NHL 98 and NBA Live 98 just a little bit. NBA Live 98 first. This was the first game for NBA uh, for the NBA Live series that, to me, started to build on the presentation value. Uh, yes, the way a sports game plays is important. I'm not going to discount that. But for me, when I'm playing a sports game, part of the immersion is getting that TV-style presentation. And EA being able to team up with TNT and pick up the likes of Ernie Johnson and Vern Lundquist doing commentary was a pretty big deal. Plus, getting the statistical overlays like you used to see on TV, that was pretty cool. Yeah, the game still skews more towards the arcade end of things than the simulation end of things, but I think it's still a lot of fun to play. And then we come to NHL 98, one of my favorite hockey games of all time. Right up there with NHL 94, to be honest with you. This game is fast, the scoring is numerous, and you can score in bunches. Uh... Plus, the two-man commentary between uh, Jim Houston and Daryl Ray is great. The stat overlays made it feel like a TV presentation, even though there was no network branding at the time. Uh, and the game is just a lot of fun to play. Plus, if you haven't seen the intro, the full motion video sequence intro for this, look it up on YouTube. It's really, really cool. So NHL 98, one of my favorite hockey games of all time. And you know what? I might write about this at some point soon, maybe leading into the next hockey season. More evidence? I got it. Remember this guy? This is Parappa the Rapper, released by Sony Computer Entertainment in 1997 for the PlayStation. We all know who Parappa is. Crack, crack, crack the egg into the bowl. Check and turn the signal to the left. Kick punch, it's all in the mind. It's lyrics that we take for granted, but this is the game that really started it all. And really, for the music genre, um, really kicked things off. After this, we started to get our Dance Dance Revolutions at home and our Guitar Heroes and Karaoke Revolutions and Rock Bands. This was the game that really started it all. This game is also very valuable, which I was not aware of. Uh, so if you don't have a copy of this uh, for yourself, for your library, you may be paying upwards of $30 to find it. So uh, it's worth it, though. Even though it's a short experience, to be able to play it on its original hardware is just very, very cool. I already talked about one Namco game. I'm going to talk about another one. This is Rage Racer, which is the third game in the Ridge Racer series for the PlayStation. Now, unlike Ridge Racer and Ridge Racer Revolution, which were very heavily arcade influenced, as a matter of fact, Revolution is basically an extension of the first game. This changes things up. It's a bit darker. It's a bit more serious. It adds RPG-like elements where you have to earn money and then spend that money to upgrade your car so you can level up in a way. Uh, the tracks are completely different. Uh, the music is not as 
over the top as the Ridge Racer games were. Uh, and I kind of like that. It's a bit more jazz influenced. And you'll find that style of music carried over to Ridge Racer Type 4 a couple of years later. Many people consider Ridge Racer Type 4 to be the highlight of the series. I think this game deserves a bit more credit than it gets. Rage Racer, released in 1997. Street Fighter EX Plus Alpha, also released in 1997. This game gets pooped on a little bit by people, especially Street Fighter purists. I love this game. And it's not necessarily that the game is any better than the Street Fighter Alpha series or the original Street Fighter games, but just because it did something different. And instead of the 2D characters, uh, this game delves into 3D just a little bit. Plus, it introduces a bunch of new characters to this series, even though the movesets are pretty much the same. The music in this series of games, the EX series, is also really, really good. I certainly recommend checking out if you can. Street Fighter EX Plus Alpha for the PlayStation released in 1997. And last but not least, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. My favorite Castlevania game of all time, and it came in 1997. This game held my attention like no game had before it in that very few games have held since. I wasn't a big fan of Super Metroid. I'll admit that on camera. I'm still not to this day. Even a spectacular game like Axiom Verge, I kind of look at it and shrug my shoulders. And maybe it's because the theme just isn't what I'm looking for. The science fiction thing doesn't hook me like the Dracula motif in the more gothic setting hooked me with Symphony of the Night. The music, of course, is outstanding. It's one of the first CD soundtracks that I ever bought with my own money. I played this game from stem to stern and back. I remember as soon as I beat the game for the first time, and I'm talking about the full game, not just the 100%, uh, I went back and I started playing it again because it was and remains that good. So what is a man? Maybe a man has a bunch of PlayStation games that he has to play this summer. Although... I'm not really a man, I don't think. I'm just a guy who likes playing games. A man is way too serious. So that's my argument for 1997 being one of, if not the, best year in console video game history. So how about you? What is your favorite year? And make sure when you tell me, tell me a little bit about why. Name some games or maybe some experiences that will always stick with you and make that year your favorite, like 1997 is mine. As always, I thank you for taking the time to watch Consolation. I really appreciate it. Again, my name is Peter. Thank you for watching. And until the next time, my friends, take care.